In Minnesota, terroristic threats is a felony charge, which can carry a prison term of up to five years. It can also do havoc uh, in any job searches you might do in the future and that sort of thing. So it's a real bad charge to catch. It's also a real bad charge to be convicted of, obviously. In Minnesota, there's three ways that prosecutors can allege that you've committed terroristic threats. The first one is to threaten to cause great bodily harm or substantial, like, substantial bodily harm on someone else. And that's things like you know broken bones, stitches, killing them, things like that. So a simple, I'm going to slap your face, wouldn't be a terroristic threat because the level of harm would just be misdemeanor assault harm, and that doesn't qualify. But you can threaten, hey, I'm going to punch you and, and break your face, or I'm going to crack your head open, or... You know, I'm going to kick you and knock you out or something like that. That's enough to catch uh, a substantial bodily harm or great bodily harm and therefore terroristic threats. Also threatening someone with a weapon. If you've got a wrench in your hand or a bat or a club or uh, anything like that and you're threatening to harm somebody else with that, that can be terroristic threats. Something like, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to end you or you won't be around anymore. Even if you communicate that by text message, by Facebook, by Twitter, anything like that, that can be enough. Um, so those are some examples of the first way that prosecutors can allege terroristic threats. The second way is if they allege that you have planted a bomb or are threatening to put a bomb or, or something else that's going to blow up uh, in a building like that. And the third way is to brandish a replica firearm or replica gun or a BB gun. And what they mean by brandish is just show it. You don't actually have to point it at somebody, but if if you come like this and you kind of pull it out of your pants or you show what looks to be a gun, even if it's a BB gun or a replica, that's enough if you're brandishing it with the intent to threaten somebody else or to scare them into that. So those are the three common ways that terroristic threats can be alleged. There are uh, some, there are a lot of defenses to these. Some of the most common are one, intoxication can be taken into account as to whether or not you truly intended to communicate the threat and intended that person to be threatened that way. Uh, another one is um, lack of intent. Obviously, I didn't intend it. So my friend comes over, he forgot to buy me a soda at the gas station. He gets to my house, hey, where's my soda? Oh, I forgot it. I'm going to kill you. I don't really mean that I'm going to kill him. I don't really mean for him to be in fear for that. So my lack of intent is something that is a good defense to a terroristic threats charge. These are just some examples, but um, even if the threat seems more serious than that, if I didn't mean for it to be taken that way, that is a defense that, that should be put forth in your, in your defense of your case. Uh, the context of the conversation, again, that getting back to that gas station example, the context of that conversation suggests that I'm joking or that I don't truly mean to put my friend in fear there. And so does the nature of relationship between the people. Um, uh, Ex-boyfriend and ex-girlfriend where there was some domestic abuse in the past, the context of that could suggest that a threat could be believed by someone who's repeatedly been beat up in the past. So the context becomes important. Um, and then sometimes the effect on the alleged victim, even if I meant to scare the heck out of them, if the alleged victim didn't take it as a threat, let's say I'm five feet tall and I weigh 90 pounds soaking wet and I'm threatening a guy that's uh, six foot two, 200 pounds, I really mean that I'm going to screw him up. I'm going to beat the holy hell out of him. But he doesn't take it that way because he's a lot bigger and he's not afraid of me. The, the fact that even though I meant it, that, that it doesn't really affect him that way, is a good defense if I'm later accused of terroristic threats. The definition under Minnesota law uh, is a couple things. One, for the threat, the defendant has to make the threat with the purpose of terrorizing another, uh, which means to have that I have to have that aim or objective or intention. And to terrorize means to cause extreme fear by the use of violence or threats. So that's just a quick primer on what terroristic threats means. Um, Merely expressing anger right away isn't a terroristic threat in many cases. So there are good defenses here. Over the years, I've had lots of clients charged with terroristic threats, and we've gotten a ton of those cases dismissed, uh, or at least those charges dismissed against clients. So uh, they are something you should fight aggressively if you're charged with terroristic threats. If you have more questions about defending a terroristic threats case, my name is Ryan Pasiga. You can call me at 612-339-5844. Or go to my website at www.arrestedminnesota.com. If you don't go there, I'll kill you.